this is the white sonora here. This is amazing. Have you looked it, at, yeah. at it close? It's no, I have tiller. It. Is it really? It's amazing. Greg's interested in lots of ancient grains, spelt to different oats, to different heirloom wheats, many, many different kinds of ingredients that he could utilize. I like the story about the, the einkorn as well. It took a lot of searching to find it. I'm glad that you did, though. I, I think this is important for us as bakers, it's for, important for us as a community. Like, you know, I just want this around. This year we're growing an ancient, ancient variety of wheat called einkorn. It's a variety that goes back 10,000 some years. You know, if this is something that really has benefit to a lot of folks. It does. I mean, like, I was able to make a really tasty bread out of it, like, awesome texture, awesome flavor, and have it still be fully glutinous, and we fed it to gluten intolerant people, and they were completely fine. If einkorn is able to be used by folks who have these gluten sensitivities, Greg can turn that einkorn into an amazing bread, and all of a sudden we've opened up a whole new world of local, nutrient-dense, ancient grain flavors to folks who are missing that. This is exciting stuff. I'm so stoked. <laughs> if we really want to change the food system, talking about vegetables and fruits is not going to cut it. It's important. But fruits and vegetables represent about 6% of our, of our agriculture. Grains represent about 75% of our agriculture, our, our land use. The Western world was built on wheat. Just as South America was built on corn and Asian countries for the most part were built on rice. But of the 60 million acres of wheat, we grow very few varieties. It is completely flavorless and completely nutritionless. Changing the food system means changing the way we think about wheat. Modern wheat is bred to have identical traits in each plant. And that enables a farmer who is growing hundreds of thousands of acres on a mega farm control exactly when to harvest, exactly when to irrigate, and exactly the amount of chemicals to apply. But imagine you're a robber and you have a key. You can get maybe into one house, but you can't get into the next house and you can't get into the next house. Imagine you're a pathogen and all the house locks are uniform. You can get into one, you can get into all of them. That is the danger of uniformity. Despite the vast biodiversity of land race wheat that has evolved for millennia and millennia, who of us today has heard of all these land race wheats? Who of us knows what a land race is? So take the cotton out off our eyes. We have to realize you've been sold a crock. And we don't have to buy in to a globalized industrial food system. A land race is a population of genetic diversity. Year by year, generation by generation, farmers selected and saved the seeds of the plants that did best in that locality. But farmers never selected for uniformity. Every land race is a mixture. You see movement, sun and light and air is going into the plants that are of varying heights. And if we could go under the ground, we would see all kinds of teeming biological activity, earthworms and soil and mycorrhizae. It's a teeming farm ecosystem. We're standing in the einkorn fields of Klaus Martens, who is a wise and experienced <laughs> organic farmer. And Klaus and I are working together to restore almost extinct land race and heritage grains and ancient grains. 
by visiting various countries, I was able to collect einkorn from Bulgaria and the Caucasus and Turkey, where einkorn is originally from. And I trialed this diversity of einkorn genotypes on my farm, selected the best, and I gave Klaus Martens a handful. Klaus pulled this plant out. This is one plant. Do you want to count the tillers? We hand harvested that first little bit, and we saw an increase of many hundreds to one. If we said 25 seeds times 33. How much is that? There'd be 800 seeds. And the next year, we had enough to seed any amount we wanted to. The increase was many fold, seven or 800 to one increase, which is also a stark contrast to our modern wheats, where if you get a 20 to one increase, you're doing good. 30 to one is bragging rights. So modern wheat, typically you'd plant 30 seeds per square foot. Yes. And einkorn, one. One or two. One or two. Yes, which is doesn't work well for the seed seller. Mm -hmm. Modern wheat great for the great. farmer. <laughs> yes, modern wheat's great for the seed company. Ha, <laughs> ha,